Okay, we have some tasks to complete because it just says that right there. So we're going to use a table and a central difference quotient to estimate these two derivatives using a table. So let's start with f prime of 0 0.6. Now I see 0 0.6 is on the table, so I'm going to use these two points just on both sides so that 0 0.6 is in the center. So that's going to be f of 0 0.8 minus f of 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.8 minus 0 0.4. So let's finish this one off real quick. This is an approximation to 0 0.8, f of 0 0.8 is 4, f of 0 0.4 is 3.5, and 0 0.8 minus 0 0.4 is 0 0.4. So that number there turns out to be, get my machine over here, 4 minus 3.5 divided by 0 0.4 not 7, 0 0.4, 1.25. Then f prime of 0 0.5 is approximately equal to now, I look at my chart again, I don't see 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is actually right here, 0 0.5. So the two points that are around it, so it's in the center, are these two points here. So those are the ones I'm going to use. So that's going to be f of 0 0.6 minus f of 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.6 minus 0 0.4. So f of 0 0.6 is 3.9, f of 0 0.4 is 3.5. The difference between these two is 0 0.2. So let's see what that number turns out to be. 3.9 minus 3.5 divided by 0 0.2. Two. Well, that's nice. These two, you very rarely get a round number unless it's fixed. Ha ha ha. Let's go to number B, or letter B. Using the central difference quotient, estimate f double prime of 0.6. So f double prime of 0 0.6. I mean, I'm going to think the same way. Here's 0 0.6 right here. I'm going to still use these two numbers around here. I mean, technically, I could do 0 0.7 and 0 0.5 um, because I can estimate the derivatives up here. Hmm. Well, I think I'm just going to use what's here on the table. So I'm going to do say that f double prime of 0 0.6 can be approximated by saying f prime of 0 0.8 minus f prime of 0 0.4, all divided by 0 0.8 minus 0 0.4. So that means I have to estimate these two, f prime of 0 0.8 and f prime of 0 0.4 like we did in part b. So this is going to be f of 1.0 minus f of 0 0.6 because 0 0.8 lies between those two. I'll divide it by 1.0 minus 0 0.6. And here, um, the two numbers that surround 0 0.4 I have f of 0 0.6 minus f of 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.6 minus 0 0.2. So let's finish these numbers off. So that's going to be 3.9 minus 3.9 all divided by 0.4, which gives me 0 over 0.4, which is 0. And then here, um, that's 3.9 minus 3.5 divided by 0.2. Let's see what that turns out to be. 3.9 minus 3.5 divided by 0.2 gives me 2 again. So I plug these numbers in here. I get 0 minus 2 divided by 0.4, which gives me negative 2 divided by 0.4 is negative 5. Now there's other ways you could have done this. Um, I'm thinking that you could have said f double prime of 0 0.6 is also f prime of 0 0.7 minus f prime of 0 0.5. 
And then you could, oh, I'll divide it by 0 0.7 minus 0 0.5. And then you could have used the number that we found up here for 0 0.5 and saved yourself some work, right? So the way that you set it up, these are both legitimate estimations. They're both central difference quotients. Um, it doesn't really matter which way. I think the numbers will be slightly different, but it should work either way. Now part C says, where do you think the maximums and minimum values of F occur in the interval from 0 to 1? So when I look here, I see I go from 3.7 down to 3.5. I stay on 3.5, and I go back up to 3.9. So it looks like, um, so it goes down to 3.5, I stay level, and I go back to 3. There, a low point could occur between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4. Yeah, because it's still it's staying the same. It could decrease and go back up here, or it could increase and go back down. So there could be one here, or there could be a low one here. So you could say the minimum value could occur either at x equal or x between 0 and 0 0.2 or x between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4. I think either one is going to be correct. And if you talk about the maximum value, it looks like I keep going up from here, up, 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 and then down. So again, the maximum value could occur between any of those two numbers. So between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8, or 0 0.8 to 1. It doesn't really, I don't think that you could find an argument for one being better than the other in either case.